Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Happy Bastille Day, everyone. I'm wearing my little French bulldog sweater in I honor. Love it. <laughs> so yes, we're starting. We're doing a little Greece, a little Italy for a bit, a little Spain. Uh, so the artist uh, that we're focusing on this week, we've mentioned in previous art talks, uh, he's an old master that has influenced many of the artists that came after him, which is why he's been an inspiration to them. And we've mentioned him here and there. So Dominikos Theokopoulos, most widely known as El Greco or the Greek, was a Greek painter, sculptor, and architect of the Spanish Renaissance. El Greco was born in the kingdom of Candia, which is modern day Crete. Uh, and at the time it was the part of the Republic of Venice, Italy. Uh, and it was kind of the center of post-Byzantine art. So he trained and became a master within that tradition before traveling at the age of 26 to Venice as other Greek artists did at the time. In 1570, he moved to Rome where he opened a workshop and executed a series of works there. Uh, during his stay in Italy, El Greco really enriched his style with elements of the Venetian Renaissance, uh, taken from a number of great artists of the time. And in 1577, he moved to Toledo, Spain, where he lived and worked until his death. In Toledo, El Greco received several major commissions and produced some of his best known paintings, such as View of Toledo and Opening of the Fifth Seal, which we'll look at in just a moment. Uh, his dramatic and expressionistic style was met with puzzlement by his contemporaries, and then later people found appreciation by the 20th century. But El Greco is regarded as a precursor of both expressionism and cubism. And he's been characterized by modern scholars as an artist so individual that he belongs to no conventional school. The burial of the Count of Orgaz is regarded as the best known work of El Greco. The large painting, a little over 15 by 11 feet, is found in the Iglesia de Santo Tome in Toledo and depicts the well-known legend of Don Gonzalo Ruiz, a charitable man. So the story goes that when he passed away, both St. Augustine and St. Stephen came from the heavens to bury him, with everyone who attended the burial standing in awe. So the painting features two contrasting parts. You've got the static bottom half with the local townspeople, priests, saints, the body of Ruiz, and then the top half, which is an organic kind of free-flowing vis vision of heaven and the saints. So this is one that we mentioned before, View of Toledo. And landscape paintings were rare in Spanish art at the time. And View of Toledo is one of, the, one of only three surviving landscape pieces of El Greco. Uh, so when looking at this piece, viewers might have a sense of panic as the painting features these menacing dark clouds rolling in from beyond. Um, and, and it has the ability to create a powerful storm battering the verdant land below. So as one of the only surviving landscapes by El Greco, not a lot is known about its beginnings, except for in inventory records. And unfortunately that doesn't really tell us much. Um, but along with Van Gogh's A Starry Night, and you can see kind of some similarities with that expressionism and that technique, it remains one of the most famous depictions of the sky in Western art. Uh, and this piece is now on display at the Met in New York. Also known as the Vision of St. John, this painting is the most famous artwork of El Greco's later years. Uh, it depicts a passage from the Book of Revelation of the New Testament where the fifth seal is being opened at the end of time and the souls of the martyrs are crying out to God for deliverance. Uh, many art critics believe that the fifth seal was an influence on Pablo Picasso's uh, Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, which we covered in the Picasso Art Talk. Uh, often considered the first Cubist painting. So again, he was El Greco was this precursor to Cubism. Uh, and we can see now with these last two pieces how influential El Greco was on many of these huge famous artists, Van Gogh, Picasso, and, and so many more. Um, and he was creating pieces so modern for his time. And this piece is also at the Met. Regarded as a masterpiece of extraordinary originality, this painting depicts the disrobing of Christ before he was crucified. Uh, here, El Greco has used a method of space elimination, which was popular in the late Byzantine era for art, and also the um, superposition of heads row upon row to suggest a crowd, right? He obviously wasn't painting the full bodies, just those heads in the background. 
Um, it, the painting is especially noted for the powerful effect created by El Greco through forceful use of color that really draw the viewer's undivided attention to the painting's foremost subject, Christ in the bright red robe. So while El Greco is mainly known for his religious works, he also produced several portraits. One of his finest examples, the nobleman with his hand on his chest, is a bust length portrait depicting a gentleman around the age of 30. Uh, he's donned in traditional Spanish clothing and he stares intensely at the viewer with his right hand resting on his chest. And this painting is void of the artist's usual bold colors. However, the exact exaggerated long fingers are present and um, this artwork currently resides at the Prado in Madrid. This was another later work of his Leo Kawan is actually El Greco's only painting that survives depicting a mythological theme. So this painting shows the dramatic moment when Leo Kawan, who was a Trojan priest, and his sons were killed by sea serpents after warning his fellow countrymen about the Trojan horse. Uh, the gods were not pleased, thereby setting up the family's demise. So you've got the backdrop of Toledo in the back. And this artwork exudes emotion as one son is dead and Leo Kwan and his other son are fighting the serpents with everything they have. Um, and the figures are this pale gray in color, alluding to the fact that the life is slowly being drained from their bodies. It's a really powerful piece. And um, this one is at the National Gallery in DC. Um, this is an enormous painting and was actually part of uh, his first major commission um, and it was painted for the high altar of the church in Santo Domingo el Antiguo in Toledo. And it established his reputation in that area. Again, it was his first major commission, so he had a lot to prove in this new town. Uh, so he painted this in Venetian technique, but he used an intensity of colors and manipulation of contrasts that were um, to become a hallmark of his personal art. The composition of the painting, which measures a little over 13 by seven feet, is divided in two halves. You have the upper section depicting the Virgin Mary rising to heaven, while in the lower section, the people stare in awe and amazement. And finally, the Holy Trinity was part of the same commission as the Ascension of the Virgin Mary. Um, and here we can see his signature technique of the contrasted colors and shadows. And we also see him start to play with the elongated figures and torsos that he becomes so well known for. Uh, this particular piece brought El Greco great fame in Toledo and is counted among his masterworks and was revered by the next generation of artists as so many of his other works were. So I hope you enjoyed looking at the inspirational works of the old master El Greco and I will see you all next week. Thank you. Uh, France, Greece, Spain makes me want to get back to Europe ASAP.